So what do you do once you've been creating content? How do you turn all those views, those followers into a targeted lead who might buy your eventual product? That's what we're gonna talk about today. We're in part three of this mini series based on my book, How to Get Paid for What You Know, which drops next week, March 22nd. So excited about this. We've been unpacking some core concepts of building your own income stream based off of the book. And today we have to talk about one of the most important things you will do in your online journey, which is not just create content, but funnel those people into your email list so that you can eventually offer them a paid offer, product, service, whatever it's gonna be. This is a missing link for people. So pay attention today as we dive into one of the most critical parts of making money online. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 151 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less and live and give more. I'm your host, of course, Graham Cochran. I named the show after myself and you are here hanging out with me today. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or your podcasting app of choice, thank you for tuning in today, wherever you are. And if you're watching on YouTube, I see you and I appreciate you. Always love the likes and the comments and the feedback to these episodes. We are in the middle of this four-part mini-series based off my book, How to Get Paid for What You Know. And I want you to pick up a copy right now. It drops next week, Tuesday, March 22nd, unless you're watching this in the future, then it's already out. But you can pre-order your copy anywhere books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, wherever. Even in other countries, so many of my students have picked up a pre-order in Amazon in their country. But here's the deal. Go to grahamcochran.com slash book right now what I'm going to be able to give you there are a bunch of bonuses. So wherever you pre-order the book, or if you've already bought the book and you didn't take advantage of this, bring your receipt to grahamcochran.com slash book, enter your name, email, and receipt number there in the form. And I'm going to be able to give you an instant package of goodies, including the first two chapters of the book you can read right away in a PDF. You're going to get an audio training called How to Get Paid for What You Know, or getting paid to do what you love, I should say. They sound similar, different thing, similar concepts. This is a powerful 45 minute training, get paid to do what you love. Um, It's an amazing training that you can dive into right away. You're going to get a bunch of other goodies that will help you maximize your online business journey, sort of turbocharge things, different ways to monetize your knowledge. So a ton of resources that you're gonna get right away. You're also gonna be part of an exclusive live stream that all my pre-order people are gonna be invited to. Details on that if you enter your receipt there. And one of you lucky pre-orderers is gonna get a free 90-minute coaching call with me. That's right, we'll be able to sit down at a time and place if you're choosing online and coach for 90 minutes. So you can bring your current business or if you're starting a business, wherever you are, I'm gonna be able to help you out powerfully for 90 minutes. So if you pre-order the book, you're entered to win that coaching session. Here's the deal. If you have gotten any value out of any of my content at any point in the last 13 years that I've been doing stuff online, would you pre-order this book? It really, really helps. It helps me get a chance to hit any of the bestseller lists. It helps uh, retailers pay attention and stock more books. It helps my publisher know that, hey, maybe Graham has something to offer here. We should maybe give him a chance to do another book. I'm only on a one book deal right now, so it's sort of a wait and see deal. Uh, So all of that helps and it gets the word out too. So the book is how to get paid for what you know, turning your knowledge, passion, and experience into an online income stream in your spare time. This is the best book on the subject. I know because I've read them all and I'm biased. So that's why I know as well. It's the book I wish existed 17 years ago when I was at a corporate job that I hated at Barnes Noble on my lunch break looking for a book to change my life. This is the book I wish were on the shelf. So I'm hoping that it'll be on the shelf for you and this can change your life as well. And if you've already gotten a ton of value, maybe you've already started your business, this will be a great resource just to reference or a great gift for somebody that you want to join you in your journey of starting something cool, get out of work that you hate, find a better career path by going to work for yourself in an online business. Again, it drops March 22nd, which is next week, friend next week. Uh, and pre-orders mean a lot. So it's all at grahamcochran.com slash books. Some super nice things, really smart 
famous people have said about me are there. So, you know, if you want to read what other people think, it's all there as well. Guys like Michael Hyatt and John Acuff and Dan Miller. It's been a real honor and a journey. Bob Burke, who wrote The Go-Giver, he endorsed the book. It's insane. So you can read some of the kind things they said there as well. So we're going to jump into the book today, and we're going to jump into chapter uh, five, which is step three. So in the book, there's a couple of introductory chapters that explain how this business model works um, and show you the opportunity you have and sort of break through a lot of the internal doubts, fears, objections my students typically have. So if you get through chapters one and two and you're like, dude, this sounds good to me, you're going to love the rest of the book. Chapter three is where we begin the six-part process. And so we were in the middle of that process. We were on step three of the six-part process, um, which was all about building your website and really having a website and a system that's meant to turn all of your visitors online, all the people that are engaging with your content online into warm leads. So a couple of things I want to pull out from the book today. Idea number one is followers, like if you have followers on the internet, followers are bystanders and email subscribers are warm leads. Followers are bystanders, email subscribers are warm leads. The goal, and this is where people get lost. Like if I'm on an airplane and I sit next to somebody and they say, hey, what do you do? And I tell them I make YouTube videos because that's the best thing I found out to say that people get interested and they don't lose their minds. And then they go, oh, like, well, how many subscribers do you have? And how many followers do you have? And they think the more followers you have, the more money you make. And nothing could be further from the truth. On a certain monetization model, if you're running ads or if you're doing brand deals or sponsored posts, then yeah, the bigger your audience, the more money you can command um, to get paid directly to just hawk products at people. But if you're building a business where you own your own digital products, which is what I teach you to do in this book, which will allow you to make way more money in the long run and have way more control and autonomy in your life, then the goal isn't followers because followers mean nothing. Those are people on the outside looking in saying, you know what? that was kind of cool. And that's it. They're not likely to buy. They may be, they may be, but that, that we don't know yet. So what we want to do is, is sift through the bystanders that are watching you from afar and just voyeuristically lur lurking. We want to sift through that group of people and find the people that are more likely to actually buy your stuff. And the way we do that is we get those people to raise their hand and join your email list. So we got to talk about email for a second. And I've talked about this at length and I explained this way more in depth in the book. Um, but your email list, a list of email subscribers is what you need to make a living. It is the most important work you could do is to try to build an email list. That's why we created content. That's what we talked about last week, which is growing your audience. We're growing the audience, not just to have a big audience, not just to be discovered, although that's step one, but now we need to sift through those people and funnel them into a smaller group of people that are more likely to buy. So anybody can like a post, anybody can follow you on a social media platform, but people that give you their email address are basically inviting you to contact them directly. There's an amazing, um, there's so many studies that are done, but an amazing study that was done on Optin Monster says that email is the preferred channel for promotions. And here's what it says. Um, it has a three-time conversion rate of that of social media to sell stuff. We're talking about, you want to sell a product, right? You want to make money. Email marketing has a 3X conversion rate of that of social media. Not only that, but it has almost 40 times the engagement rate that social media has. So you think engagement on social media is important. Any engagement on email, you have 40 times, you're 40 times more likely to get more engagement on email than you are on social media. Now that might, depending on what generation you're in or what your day-to-day -day interaction with stuff looks like, that might blow your mind because we are conditioned to think that social media is where everything's happening. And it's not. It's where a lot of stuff is happening, but where are the buyers? They're in your email list. Money's being made in the inbox, not on social media. Here's uh, an article I want to quote it directly. 60% of consumers state that they have made a purchase as the result of a marketing message they received by email. On the flip side, only 12.5% of them even consider a buy button as a purchase driver on social media. Now, this study is two years old. Um, so it, I think you're going to see more people getting more comfortable buying on social media. But the point is 60% versus 12.5%. 
we are more conditioned to buy when we get a marketing message in our inbox. Oh, Gap has a sale on their clothes. Oh, my favorite band has got a new album that's out. Oh, Home Depot is running a sale on paint. Like we're, we're more likely to buy something when we get an email message. We're used to that. We can click over to a website and buy. Social media, we're not there to buy. We're there to be entertained. So just think about that. The inbox is where stuff is happening. And I get it, we all have way too much email, but that is still, the, the data continues to show us. I'm just trying to help you with facts here, friends. The data continues to show us that email is the number one driver of sales online. So email, social, here's another one, emarketer.com. This article is uh, one year old now. Email leads social media as the most effective channel for customer retention by 20%. 20%. So it's a more effective medium to sell email than social media. So we want to move people off of any social media platform or even YouTube. If they like you on YouTube, we want to move them off of YouTube onto an email list because why it's going to help us sell better. Number one. Number two, social media is like renting a house. Email is owning a house. There's a big difference. Both are decent. Both are a house. But here's the deal. If, you're, if you have followers on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you have a middleman. You have a gatekeeper between you and your followers. So you might think you have direct access to them, but you don't because there's someone else behind the scenes pulling the strings, controlling the almighty algorithm who has the right and has, they do this from time to time and often actually to change the rules of the game. So Trying to build a business on social media is like building a business in someone else's playground or their sandbox. It's great until they change the rules. I use this example a lot, but a few years back, I had built 100,000 subscribers, excuse me, 100,000 followers on Facebook, still do, and I thought I was great. Back then, if I posted something on my Facebook account, all 100,000 of those followers would see it, assuming they logged into Facebook that day. And then Facebook decided to, to completely change the way they do things. And they said, why should we let people have their posts be seen by their followers without charging for it? We don't want to be free anymore. We want to drop organic reach, which wasn't a thing. All You didn't think about what the word organic meant back then for your reach because it was all there. Anyone who followed you would see your stuff. Facebook made one change and all of a sudden... Now you have to boost your post so that all your followers who already, already had said, please let me follow Graham, could see what Graham's saying. So without boosting it, you were down to maybe 12% of your, your followers would see what you're posting. On Instagram, that's dropped to less than 3% and on the last study I've read on organic reach, meaning less than 3% of your followers even see what you're posting. So what, like, what's the point of your posting? Most people aren't seeing it unless you pay for it to show up. I had my, my website traffic drop in half one day to the next when Facebook made that change. Now, luckily I have an email list so I can still sell to people in my email list, but that's the whole point is when TikTok changes the algorithm or when nobody cares about TikTok anymore and it's on some other platform, what do you do with all those followers that either cannot see you anymore or no longer on that platform or the platform shuts down? You have lost your ability to communicate with them. Whereas if you capture their email address, there is no middleman. It is the most direct way to contact them. You send an email, it goes directly to their inbox. Now, there are inherent flaws with email. Don't get me wrong. People have tons of email. Sometimes things go to spam. Email clients are just getting more spam heavy, spam trigger heavy. It's not a perfect system. But as far as what we have available to us, it is the best system because you have direct access and ownership over that audience. Just like if you rent a house, it's great until your landlord kicks you out. You don't own the place. So you don't get to make the rules. But if you own the house, you make the rules, you can stay in the house. So we want to build our own audience that we own and we control. Every big brand knows this. If you want to just do your own quick research, just go to any website and see when that little thing pops up and offers you 10% off your first order or free shipping if you give us your email address. They're not asking you to like them on social media platforms. They're asking primarily for your email address and they're going to offer you something. Why? Because they know what I just shared with you is that email is the number one way to drive sales. They want to make sales. So that being said, and this is what I start to talk about in the book is when you're building your website, 
or creating any content online, the whole point of the website and the content is about one thing. It's not about getting them to like you on social media platforms. It's not about getting them to communicate with you and send you an email. It's not about uh, telling your story on your about page. It's not about hawking your products even on your website. Do you know the number one point of your website and the number one point of all your products is to do one single thing and that is to capture an email address. It's the number one purpose for you internally for all the content you create in your entire website. You need a website and you need content that builds a list. That's the most important thing. Because then when we have that list, we can sell to our audience directly and automatically, which is something we won't even be able to cover in this uh, little mini series. But uh, step six of the six step process in the book is all about automating your business. You can't do that without email. So, so important. So how do we do that, Graham? Because I see some people just saying, okay, I, I think I know that I'm supposed to be building an email list. So I'm going to ask people, sign up for my email list or join my newsletter. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Why? Because nobody will join. Most people already get too much email. I get too much email, don't you? So that's not an incentive to give people more email in their inbox. They don't want more email in their inbox and they don't. nobody wants to be on a newsletter by and large. So you have to give them something in exchange for their email address. And what we want to do here is give them what we call a lead magnet. And I talk about this at length and I, I make a big point of this in the book, but this is so important. We want to create a lead magnet, which is something valuable, exclusive content that is a must have for them. And the only way they're going to get this is to give us their email address and join our email list. Now, of course, they can unsubscribe from our email list at any point. So if they just want the free thing, they give us our email address, they get the free thing, they can always hit the unsubscribe button. They're never locked in. But that is our best chance at build, building a list is to offer more value, which is so cool because this is something I talk about in chapter two of my book in the value circle section, which is your business is built on giving. Don't ask for anything, instead give. So you've given free content that they found. They found your website. If you're lucky enough that they found your website and you're lucky enough that they found your content, you can't bank on them ever coming back to your website or ever seeing your content again. So we got to get them on an email list. So what we want to do is we want to give them more things. We want to give them something powerful. And here are some things to consider giving, right? In the book, I have five irresistible lead magnet ideas, but I want to just give you two. One of the best ones you can do is the cheat sheet or the checklist. So what this means is someone is enjoying your content or they land on your homepage and you have some kind of headline or some kind of promise that says, hey, download this something, something cheat sheet and it's gonna give them some benefit and they just pop in their email address to get it. Let me give you an example. The other day, I went to Disney World with my family. My 10-year-old, it was her birthday. All she wanted, she didn't want a party. She didn't really want any gifts. She just wanted to go to Disney's Hollywood Studios and she wanted to go to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And so I, as a good father, I sacrificed. I said, sure, I'll, I'll be willing to, to suffer and go to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It was awesome. And so I knew I needed to do some research because you just can't buy a ticket and stroll into Disney World anymore and expect to get on the rides you want to get on without waiting for three hours. And Disney just changed everything. They got rid of Fast Pass. And now they have Lightning Lanes and Genie and Genie Plus, all this stuff. It's so confusing. So I had to do some research, which I was really irritated on. But guess what? There are Disney bloggers. Of course. I was on mousehacker.com. I was on... Um, I forget, that was the best one so far that I found. A couple, I was on three. I read three blog po blogs, multiple blog posts. All this to say, I was on Mouse Hacker or one of these sites, and what did they offer me? A plan your Disney trip itinerary cheat sheet. I had to give them that, my email address for it. And what it was, was you, you tell them the park, you tell them your goals, you tell them like the age of your kids, and they would map out the perfect itinerary for you that they know will work based off of your goals. Like, I don't have to scour the internet. I don't have to even scour their own website. Their website was so rich with resources, but it's almost overwhelming. And something I always say to my students where there's overwhelm, there's opportunity. So they know that their own website is overwhelmingly good. So here's an opportunity, just simplify it. Graham, don't read our whole blog. It's just too much. Just download this little cheat sheet. It's like a cheat. 
It's like Game Genie on your Sega Genesis back in the day. It's like cheat codes. Then you can skip right to the good stuff and know exactly what to do so you can be an awesome dad and your family thinks you're amazing because you got right in on Rise of the Resistance without a wait and you enjoyed your time and you had plenty of time at the park to do everything you wanted and you're hashtag winning. Thank you, Mouse Hacker. Thank you for the cheat sheet to plan my itinerary. That was a good lead magnet. They offered me something relevant to what I was looking up on their website. A no brainer, gosh, I gotta have this thing. Instant win or quick win. I can instantly feel the value. So that's a way to think about lead magnets. So the cheat sheet is great because it's so simple. You're not offering them an ebook that they have to read. Gosh, no one, no offense to authors like myself. No one has time to read books, right? So don't offer them a book for free. Offer them a cheat sheet or a checklist because it sounds quick. Because guess what it is quick? It's usually one or two pages of a PDF. You can write it in a Google Doc, export it as a PDF, easy for you to create, but easy for them to digest and get a quick win. I have a friend named Jordan who is an audio engineer and he's built his brand online. It's a half a million dollar year business, at least last time I talked to him. He's built his brand online by offering a cheat sheet for audio engineers who are having a hard time doing the mixing process, which is a very highly technical post-production process for audio. And so he's built his list simply by giving away this mixing cheat sheet. And it's not even, it's not a how-to, it's just like, here's, here's the best quick settings. It crushes because people are like, I gotta have that. Even if they don't read it, they know it's a resource they wanna have saved on their computer or their phone. They're gonna give him, they're give him their email address to get it. Cheat sheets are great. They don't have to be in depth. Just give people a quick win, okay? Give people a quick win. Um, a slightly longer version of the cheat sheet is a multi-step guide. So a six-step process to whatever. One I have on the Recording Revolution that I've had for years is my radio-ready guide, right? So it's a multi-step process. It's six steps to a radio-ready song. And so it takes a complex process of like, how do you, how do you go from song idea to something that sounds really good that it could stream on Spotify or on the radio right now and sound professional? It's overwhelming for musicians and there's so many parts. And so what I've promised in this guide is like, look, here's a simple six, six step process. And I'll walk you through all six steps. So you know exactly what to do and think of it as just like a little map. It's a roadmap. And so you can go from song idea to sounding ridiculously dope on Spotify in six steps. That's not quite as quick as a cheat sheet or a checklist, but it's still comprehensive while sounding quick. And it's like, the you gotta have this, just download it. And I tell people, print it out, keep it at your, your workstation, your desk, or save it on your phone or your tablet so that whenever you have a song idea, pick it up, open it up, you'll know exactly what to do. It's an empowering message, it's an empowering tool. So generally speaking, PDFs work well. Generally speaking, this is what I'm doing and you don't have to spend forever creating this. So. The goal here is think through the journey from someone engaging with your first piece of content. So they find your podcast or your blog post, or they're watching your video. No matter what that video, blog post, or article, or podcast is about, what would be a logical next step that you could offer them that they would find instantly valuable, give them a quick win, and it seems like a no-brainer. This does not have to be in depth. It's just, it's gonna give them a quick, it can be very focused, helps them in maybe one specific area. What could that be? If you could wave a magic wand or have the Staples easy button, remember those commercials, you hit the easy button and it's done. What could you do for them? And then make them a little PDF. It could also be a video, it can be an audio download. I've done all of these, but PDFs tend to be easier to create and easier for them to digest. What little PDF could you create that has a bold promise as a headline? And if you need to be clear, you can have a sub headline. Um, what could you offer them? That while they're engaging with your content or if they land on your website, the number one thing they see, and this is where it ties into your website is, this should be the headline of your website, is this lead magnet. Because again, if they land on your website, you don't wanna sell them a product most of the time. You wanna get their email address so that you can sell them a product, but also follow up with them if they're not ready to buy. If they don't buy and you don't have their email address, you'll never be able to follow up with them. So get the email address. I'd rather have the relationship than the sale any day because the relationship can lead to multiple sales and sales down the road. If I push the sale and they don't buy, I've lost them and I can't expect them to ever come back to my website. So your website and your content should always be focused 
on getting their email address, which means it should all be pointing to your lead magnet. If you listen to the show, you know that I offer something at the beginning and end of every single episode. It is my lead magnet. Why? I want your email address. I want you on my email list because two reasons. One, if you're liking this content, I know that when you're on my email list, you're going to get exclusive content that I don't post elsewhere. That's only going to help you, which is going to make you like me more. And I want to build that relationship. I want you to like me, trust me, um, because you'll eventually buy from me is my hope. And if you don't buy from me, I hope that you'll at least tell other people about me. And then two, I, if I want to have a chance at selling you some of my products that I know will transform your life and business as well, I, I got to sell to you over email. Otherwise, I have to spend all my time selling publicly, which is exhausting and not the way to run a business. Spend your public time giving value for free, inviting them into a deeper relationship with you on your email list, and then you can sell to them privately on the back end. So in the book, I go through three other awesome, powerful lead magnet ideas. Um, when you're building your, your website and you're building your lead magnet, you, you're you going to need a couple of tools. So if you're using Kajabi, which you should, you can do everything. You can have pop-ups, you can have opt-in forms, you can have landing pages that collect email addresses, and then they have the email marketing software in the back end to follow up, to offer your sales, all that kind of stuff. If you aren't using Kajabi, there's other tools like MailChimp that can capture email addresses and follow up and do email marketing. ConvertKit is another great tool for that. Aweber, ActiveCampaign, all of these tools allow you to do follow-up and do email marketing. So you're going to need some tool to do the email marketing side of things. And most of these email tools now have built-in landing pages and opt-in forms, and they've gotten really um, robust. So you could do a lot more now. MailChimp is great if you're starting out and money is really tight because they have a great free plan that you can at least capture. I think last time I checked up to 2,000 email addresses and start to then email your people. But Again, if you're on Kajabi, everything is baked in. I'm still surprised at how many people that are using Kajabi have no idea that it has email baked in. So you don't need MailChimp, you don't need ConvertKit. I got rid of both of those once I got on Kajabi full time. So you need some tool to capture the email address. So you need a website and for website hosting and, and platforms, you can build a WordPress site um, where you're just, the software is free. You just need web hosting. Uh, you can build a Squarespace site where the hosting and the website pl platform are built in for the monthly price. Um, or you can use a tool like Kajabi where you're getting a million things, but website hosting and website builders are built in as well. I run my entire website now on Kajabi. I used to have a WordPress site for many years, over a decade. But once I saw that Kajabi had website hosting built in, I rebuilt my entire site in Kajabi. So my hosting is baked in, my website designer uh, is baked in, the, the website builder is baked in. And then my email marketing, everything is inside of Kajabi, which makes it nice. It's one login for me, but you don't have to use Kajabi, but it is a great platform. You need something to host your site, build a beautiful looking site, but then capture email addresses and follow up with them there. That's the most important thing that you're doing. Your website, in the book, I talk about, you know, what to include on your website, style, design, a couple of pages you need. But I, I want to stop there because I think the most important thing we need to hear is that your website Yes, you can talk about what you offer. Yes, you can talk about your story and who you are, but none of that matters nearly as much as capturing an email address. If you go to my website, you're going to see it's all geared to capturing your email address. I want to capture the relationship because I never want to assume that you're going to ever come back. And same thing with my YouTube videos and my podcast. I never want to assume that you're going to listen to all my other stuff or watch my other stuff. This might be the only piece of content you ever engage with. And if so, my job to best serve you and serve me is to do one thing, get you on my email list. That way I can follow up with you with my free stuff, which I do. All my email subscribers get my free stuff every week. And the new email subscribers get some exclusive stuff that I don't post elsewhere. But then it's also where I'm able to offer my products to you and make a sale and make your life better as well because I believe I have really valuable products. So it's a win-win, but the only way for that to happen is to build an email list. And that's the takeaway I want for you to have is think about what could you offer your people that would be a super valuable lead magnet? What problem could you solve? What promise could you deliver on quickly, fast, in an easy to digest PDF? That's the big thing you need to stew on today and then get the technical stuff figured out pretty easy in MailChimp or Kajabi or any of these platforms so that your site and content is all focused on offering this lead magnet to people and watch it build your list. And while you build your list, you'll find that when we start to sell a product or any product you already have, so much easier to do that via email than to do it on social media, on your website or on YouTube or in a podcast. Don't sell publicly, 
sell privately, but to do that, you need an email address and you need an email list. Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment below. What is your lead magnet? Do you have one? Are you promoting it in every single piece of content you make? Is it all over the homepage of your website? If not, where are you in that journey? And the other call to action for you today, and this is the most important thing, is this is really your last chance to pre-order the book this week to really help me with first week sales. So would you, I'm, I'm just begging you, if you've already pre-ordered one, thank you so much. Would you pre-order another for a friend? That would be amazing. Actually, a lot of you have done this. This is not even a joke. So many people are quitting their jobs. So many people are disenchanted with their career path or their the workforce right now. I'm seeing people want to move into self-employment. And this is the time, friend. Fulfilling meaningful self-employment online, it has never been easier and it's never been more possible. We are still at the beginning of the wave. It is still the time to cash in. This is a great tool to put in a friend's hand. They will love you forever, especially once they make a lot of money following everything in this book. And you can literally build your entire business off of this book. So I did not keep it light. This is not a giant sales pitch for my course. This is the course. This is the method. Everything is in here to build your business. So it's it's worth it, okay? So pre-order a copy for you and a friend. It will help me out. Get the word out. And if you get a copy, when it comes in next week, when your copy comes in, I'm gonna talk about this in the next week's episode as well when we, when we launch and celebrate the book. But will you do me a favor? Will you share it on social media? Share it with your friends. Show that you're reading the book. Get the word out. This book is gonna change a generation. I'm telling you, it's gonna change people's lives. This could be the definitive book for this generation and I'm excited to get it in people's hands. So will you be a part of that movement? It would mean a lot. Pre-order the book. Everything's at grahamcochran.com slash book, including where to pre-order the book, how to get the bonuses, and just a little bit of details about the book if you wanna know more about it. It's called How to Get Paid for What You Know, Turning Your Knowledge, Passion, and Experience into an Online Income Stream in Your Spare Time. I'm super proud of it. Celebrate with me when it drops March 22nd, next Tuesday. Have an amazing week. Thanks for hanging out on this episode, and I'll see you on another episode real soon. <laughs>